Hello everyone, it's Allison, and I'm going to be doing my very first makeup tutorial, which is super weird for me to say, but we're, we're going to try it out. So today I figured, since this is the first one, that I would do a pretty easy basic look. Um, it does have a little bit of glitter, pink, taupe colors, so some good stuff. Uh, I will also be sharing some techniques and also some of the products that I usually use. And I think I'm just going to focus mainly on the eyes today, so I'm not going to show you the full face makeup, but if you do want something like that in the future, feel free to let me know and um, I can do all sorts of different techniques or different videos that you guys would like to see. So just let me know. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'll put my headband in so I don't get makeup all over my face. Wait. I want makeup all over my face. Whatever. Okay, so to get started, um, I am going to be starting out just like this. I'm not going to be putting any foundation on my face. I usually do my eyes first. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by priming my eyelids. This is a super, super important step for any makeup look. Um, a shadow primer is going to keep your eyeshadow in place for the whole day. It's going to keep it looking flawless, no creasing, um, and it's just going to look really good. So what I happen to use is the Urban Decay. And this is the eyeshadow primer potion in the shade Original. It's just a nice tan color. It is $25 and you can find it at Sephora. But if that's a little bit too expensive for you, a little out of your price range, feel free to get something from NYX. NYX, N-Y-X, not N-I-C-K, apostrophe S. Uh, NYX can be found at any sort of drugstore. CVS, Walgreens, Ulta has the professional line and they are amazing and also super affordable. So it's a great starter brand. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is put on my eyeshadow primer. So what I do is I just put it on and then I'm just going to very gently using my finger spread this around. I'm not pulling or tugging and I'm also making sure to put it all the way up under the brow bone. And that's very, very important to do. And then I'm just going to let that dry for a bit. And I'm actually going to move on to the eyebrows today. So a lot of you might be using uh, an eyebrow pencil, and that is perfectly fine. I even have an eyebrow pencil. I just don't normally use it. It's not really my shade. I like a darker shade for my hair. Um, but I do have a Benefit Cosmetics eyebrow pencil. This is shade 3. It's alright. I don't know. But if you want a more advanced technique, you can also use what's called pomade. And uh, that is what I use on a daily basis. This is the Cabrow by Benefit Cosmetics. It is in shade five, which is the darkest shade, it goes from one to five. And it's very cool. It's just, you can see, it's sort of like a gel. It's not gonna like pour out or anything, but it is um, what I like to use. So it comes with a little angled brush and you just stick it in the holder. Do you know how long it took me to figure out that this goes in here and makes it a longer handle? Forever. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lightly dip into this. Otherwise, it's gonna look like you drew on your eyebrows. We don't want that. So uh, I am gonna be looking into a little compact down here, but what I like to do is start with under the brow and sort of outline where I want my brow to be. And then I go back in and start shading. Um, I do like a blockier brow. And if you don't like a blockier brow, then you don't have to do it. That's the great thing. So right now I'm just shading in the brow. Also sort of outlining the top of the brow as well. 
Um, I do shave off the very ends of my brow. If you kind of notice, it just sort of stops. I do that on purpose. And that's so that I can draw the tail the way that I want to draw it. And it grows back, so it's not a big deal. So then when I get to my tail here, I can just do a very precise, sharp line. By the way, I hope you're enjoying my hilarious setup here. It's not the best setup in the world, but you know what? It'll do. It will do. All right, so there's the brow. It is on. And now I'm going to move to the next step, which is concealing the under eyebrow area, the brow bone, Again, this is really important for if you happen to make a mistake with your pomade or your eyebrow pencil. This way, it's really easy for you to clean it up. So what I like to do is actually use a concealer. You do not have to break the bank with your concealer on this one. I use the Maybelline New York Cover Stick. And this is in the shade Fair. It's the lightest one. I wonder why. <laughs> And I'm just going to be using an angled eyeliner brush. This one is the one that I'm going to be using. And it is by e.l.f. e.l.f. is a really inexpensive brand. Not my favorite brushes in the world, but they do the job. So I have no issue with it. So what I'm going to do is just take this and get some of it on all sides. And then I can go in and conceal. So I'm just going to be drawing a line and basically tracing the bottom part of my brow so that I can really clean this up. Like so. And then to blend it out, I'm just going to be dragging that down is going to blend it in and this is why you want to use a concealer that is your shade. This is also why we started with putting on an eyeshadow primer because we've got product on there now and now it's going to stay in place. Anytime you have a cream product you want to set that with powder that's generally the rule. I say generally because if you have wrinkles like I do under my eyes. It doesn't really work out when you try to set it with powder. Just being honest. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set that with the powder. This is a more natural everyday look. So I'm gonna be using white and tan, and I'm gonna be using the Morphe 35B palette, my go-to palette. <laughs> this has every color of the rainbow. Oh, it's so beautiful. So I'm gonna be going ahead and starting off with this. This is a matte white shade and a matte tan shade right below it. And to apply that, I'm gonna be using another e.l.f. brush. This is called the Eyeshadow C brush. Looks like this. And um, it's usually meant for the crease area of your eyelid, but I actually like to use this as a nice packing brush. So I'm just going to be taking that white shade and then stamping it right on the arch. So you can already see how it highlights that brow bone area. It looks really, really pretty. And then for the rest of it, I'm going to go in with tan which is gonna make it a little bit softer. And if you have a little bit of fallout like I do, it's not a huge deal, because you can sort of wipe it off. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do my other eyebrow off camera, and I'm gonna be right back. Let's see if I can make this editing magic happen. I've seen this in other videos, let's try it. So I'll be right back with the other eyebrow done. All right, we're back with both brows complete, both 
highlighted beautifully and now we're actually ready to move on to the eyeshadow hooray so for eyeshadow today I am gonna be using a pink sparkle so I want to keep it in that sort of hmm I don't know I guess you could call it more of a warm toned look uh, and I am going to be using a couple different colors. So I'm going to be going ahead and using the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. This is the Prism palette. It's so beautiful. If you've never used Anastasia Beverly Hills products before, they are fairly powdery and extremely pigmented. So my recommendation is use a little bit, otherwise you're going to be going for a dramatic look. And we're not going for a dramatic look today, now are we? So I am going to be using my favorite brush of all time. This is from Morphe. Morphe is my favorite for brushes. I just ordered a new Morphe set. I'm so excited to get it. This is the E17 brush. Look how much I've used this. Do you see that? You can't even see the numbers anymore. This is specifically for crease shading. And we're going to start out with a transition shade. Transition shade is really just going to be something light that we're going to put down because powder tends to blend better with another powder rather than just skin. So this is going to make it very easy to blend. Blending takes a lot of patience. You just got to keep working at it and you will get used to it, I promise. So to start out, I'm going to be using this shade right here. It's called Unity. And it's just a nice yellowish tan. Did you see, do you see how much I got on there? I barely, I'm, I'm telling you just like a tap and you get that much. So what we're gonna do is put this in the crease and not all the way up to the brow because we just put that beautiful white. But we're just gonna start at the outer corner and work our way in. Just putting down a little bit of this product to help us blend. You're gonna notice a lot that when I get to the outer corner of my eye that I do do circular motions. I do that on purpose. I like to have sort of a rounded edge to most of my more natural looks. Next up we're gonna go into this coral shade. This is called Eden. It's super, super pretty, and it's really gonna make that pink sparkle pop. So again, just a tap. You get a lot of product. They don't mess around. And here's the thing. When you're blending and doing something in the crease like this, you wanna build your colors. So you don't wanna overlap them too much because you wanna see it. It wants to be like an ombre effect. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in. And blend it upward. Just nice, very light, soft windshield wiper motions and then rounding it off in the outer corner. Notice that I stop putting product around where the end of my eyebrow is. That's super important. You don't want to go all the way into your inner corner. It's just not going to look right. And you can play around with color and how much you want. Again, this is going to be more of a softer look, so just building that color and really spending time blending it out. All right, we're on to the next color, which is going to be this taupe color. It's called Lure. And you're also going to notice that I'm going from lighter shades to darker shades. And if you have an issue where you're like, ah, this isn't blending very well, you can always go back into the previous shade and blend it a little bit more. No problem. So I'm going to go into Lure now and trying to keep it so that it's more directly into the crease and to do that we're going to hold this sort of parallel to the ground and perpendicular to our eye. And really what you're doing here is creating depth. See how it's just deepening that up? It looks really nice. But we're not covering up the coral. We're just making a gradient and creating some depth. Looks 
pretty good. All right, so now I want to move to a different brush. This is actually the brush that came with this particular palette and it is double-sided. This is more of supposed to be a packing brush, but I think of it more of as a pencil brush. You see how thin it is? And I really like this for that deepest, darkest color. So for this one, we're gonna be using this chocolate brown shade. It's called Parallel, right here. Whoops, this one, not the gold. And I am just dipping it in. I'm not putting it on the flat side at all. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and put this right in the very center of that crease. So you might look at it and go, um, that's pretty intense. And you would be correct. But once we have that in there, we can go ahead and go back to our E17, not putting any more product on the brush, and just lightly blending so I don't have a crazy harsh line. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the actual lid of the eye, which is super, super easy this time. I'm gonna be using a packing brush. My favorite one actually came with a different eyeshadow palette. It's called the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. A lot of neutrals, really, really nice palette. And so this is the brush. Again, it is another double-sided. Here's a fluffy brush, and this is our packing brush that I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna go back into my Morphe 35B palette and I'm gonna be picking out a nice matte rose color, this one here. Because we are gonna be putting a pink glitter on our lid, it's just nice to have a little bit of a base in there. So I'm just gonna be picking some of that up. And what I'm doing here is I'm not so much just swiping it across the eye, I am actually packing it on and doing very short motions. If you can see how short this motion is. Really more of a packing. Getting it nice and even. Over the entire lid. And again, this is gonna be covered up with glitter, so it doesn't have to be crazy perfect here. Got some in my lashes. Hope you guys are putting up with my random voices here. If you don't know me, that's a thing I do. It's just how I am. All right, and then again, to clean up, I'm gonna go back in and just make sure that everything is blended. We're gonna be doing this a few times. All right. Next up is, it's time for glitter. Who doesn't love glitter? This is the Stila Glitter, kind of hard to see, uh, and this is the Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow, and it is in the shade Kitten Karma, so it's hard to see, kind of, it's pink, trust me. So this comes out in a little doe foot, beautiful, and the easiest way to apply this is directly to the lid and then use your finger to tap. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this right on the center, put a little bit of it down, and then we're just gonna tap and put it all over. If you have smaller eyelids than I do, feel free to use your pinky, but I have large lids, so. And then when it stops sort of spreading, you can place more product down and tap it out. Looks so awesome. Man, I love this stuff. I use this all the time. I have two other shades of this. Like a brown, sort of smoky eye sparkle, and then a holographic sparkle. Oh, 
Ooh, it looks so pretty. I love it. See what it does in the sun? Oh, it's so easy too. All right, and again, one more time with that blending. So I'm gonna go back in and we've got some sparkles, but I just wanna make sure that this is nicely blended. All right, now it's time for eyeliner. Right now what I'm using is the Stila. This is a waterproof liquid eyeliner and it's a micro tip. So when they say micro tip, they mean very, very, very small. Makes it super precise, which is great. And I like to do a winged liner. I'm not gonna go crazy with this one because again, we're going for more subtle, natural glow type of look. Um, if you're new to wingtip liner, and I could do a, an entire video on wingtip liner to be honest with you, um, I started out by using scotch tape um, the general rule is if you want to do wing liner, you need to follow the natural path of your lower lid. So mine is going to go here. So I'm going to go ahead. I've found my natural line and I'm going to start by drawing inward to that lower lash. So I've got my guideline, and then I'm not going to draw a triangle. Don't draw a triangle. We're going for a wing, not a triangle. So instead of drawing it from the top of that line inward, I'm actually going to start a little bit lower and sort of swoop it in. Once you have your full line, you can go ahead and shade the rest of it in. All right, so there is our winged liner, looking good. And now we're gonna move on to mascara. So we're almost there, but before I do, my mascara. I am going to be curling my eyelashes. So we're just going to put our upper lashes in and I like to hold this for about five seconds. Give it the maximum curl. And then I'm going to be using my Benefit Cosmetics They're Real Mascara. And, and when you're doing mascara you want to be looking downward because you don't want to get any mascara on your beautiful eyelid that you just completed. Oh, splendid. Alright, so I am actually going to go ahead and complete the other eye and the rest of the face makeup so that I can come back and do just the under part. That's the wrong eye. The under part of this lash line and then we'll be done. Wow, so exciting. All right, so again, let's see if I can do the editing triumph again. This is gonna be so awkward if I can't do this. All right, I'm back and I have my full face on so we're almost done. Ooh. Um, I went ahead and put on my foundation. Um, and I also put on the Anastasia Beverly Hills matte lip in shade naked. So I like a good nude lip color. Anyway, so we're almost done. We just have to do the bottom uh, lashes, which are very, very easy. So uh, I'm gonna start with the waterline. In the waterline today, I like to go for white, generally, and my 
favorite to use is the NARS. This is just a regular white eyeliner pencil and it's kind of creamy so it works really well. And I'm going to be putting this in the waterline which is this right here. So there we go. It's weird to do the first time around, I will tell you that. But it really gives you like a very awake look. Do you see the difference between my eyes right now? And because we're at the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and do both. So I don't have to do any more editing. Super. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and define the lower part. And to do that, I'm gonna be using this brush. This is actually an eyeliner brush that I got years ago from Merle Norman. See how small that is? Um, and I just like to use it for smoking out the lower lash line. And to do that, I'm gonna be going back in with Lure, which is that taupey color. And then starting at the outer corner, and going on the lashes, so I'm not in the waterline. I'm just gonna smoke that inward. This is called smoking out the lower lash line. And it just gives it a little bit of definition. And you wanna go to about halfway or three quarters of the way. Not all the way, unless you're doing, again, a dramatic look. I love putting white in the waterline though. It really does make your eyes look bigger. And if you put black in the waterline, it makes your eyes look smaller. Pro tip for you there. I am not a pro at all. I'm self-taught, by the way. <laughs> in case you didn't know. All right, so we're done with that. Put that same mascara on the bottom lash line. And I'm only going to be doing this on the outer quarter. So just on the outer quarter of it. Very slight. And what would a finished look be without setting spray? Setting spray is super, super important. If you want your makeup to last all day long, you need setting spray. And I happen to use the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is the small one. You can actually get a larger version of this. Um, there are other setting sprays out there. You can get this one at Sephora. And you're just going to spritz it. fan it a little bit let it dry and this is it this is the look I'll take my headband out this is the look and it's very nice super subtle very glowing and glamming and beautiful um, if you liked this video and you want to see more, please let me know. Um, this is super fun for me. It's my favorite hobby and I have so many hobbies. So many hobbies. Um, but I can do a whole bunch of techniques if you just want to see a video on how I do, um, like how I do eyebrows or like different brow products. Um, if you want to see me use like the brow pencil instead of the pomade. If you wanna see me just do like how I do foundation because I skipped that whole part this time. Um, or even if you wanna see me do different eyeshadow techniques like how do I do a smoky eye? How do I do a cut crease or a half cut crease or a halo spotlight? Um, lots of jargon in the makeup world. But if you have a specific thing that you want me to do, just let me know. This was actually really fun. <laughs> And um, I'm hoping that I can edit this to make it look cool. <laughs> We're gonna find out. So um, thanks again for watching. I hope this was helpful and um, maybe I'll see you guys next time. Bye.